Hey, good morning, everyone. Today is Wednesday, March the 3rd, and this is your Daily Word of Encouragement. And so for the past week, we've been talking about uh, following Jesus on that journey over there. And over there could mean uh, someone who's different from me, someone who looks different from me, someone who thinks and acts or votes differently from me, um, or it could mean anyone with whom I have conflict. Um, that sometimes the most difficult part of following Jesus faithfully and being his disciple is learning how to love others in the way that Jesus would love them, especially when they're not being very loving toward us. And so today, uh, as we kind of wrap up this theme um, uh, with, our, with our morning devotion today, um, we're going to hit on a verse that really speaks to how Jesus sees other people. Um, uh, when Jesus came into this world, he said in, in John three sixteen and 17 that uh, he did not come into this world the first time to judge it, but so that the world could be saved through him. Now, make no mistake, when Christ returns, he will come as the righteous judge. Um, he will come and, and all things will be made right. All justice will be done throughout this world. Uh, but that's not how he came the first time. He came and to see us as God has always seen us and to give us the opportunity to be reconciled back to him as he became the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And so uh, with that being said and understood, hopefully, uh, I want to jump into the scripture today that we're going to hit from Matthew chapter 9. This is right in the middle of Jesus' earthly ministry when he was traveling from town to town, uh, just encountering people and just really being overwhelmed with the, the sickness and the brokenness of the world that he came to inhabit. Um, I can't even imagine what that must have been like for Jesus to, to, to leave um, God's presence and to leave uh, uh, to leave heaven, to leave a place where uh, there was no evidence of sin, there was no evidence of, of death and disease and pain and suffering, and to come into a world that was just rife with it. I can't imagine what, a, uh, what an experience that was for him. Um, but Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 to 38, really shows us um, what Jesus' true heart response was when he saw this. Uh, beginning verse 35. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. And then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Now, there's two parts of this passage I really want to focus on. The first one is Jesus' response at seeing the brokenness of people all around him. Um, that, 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 that compassion response. Uh, the word in, in Greek is splanitsomai, which speaks to the very, it's where we get the word spleen from, but it's, it really kind of speaks to the, the, the core of who we are, the guts of who we are, that Jesus' guts were spilled out. He felt it in the very core of his being when he saw the hurt and the pain that existed in this world all around him. Um, it triggered an emotional response, a gut, a gut level response of, um, I, I, I've got to do something about this. And Jesus did do some temporary healings. He temp temporarily healed people from their phys physical illnesses and sicknesses. But you know what? Those people are going to get sick again. Those people are one day going to die. Even those that Jesus actually resurrected from the dead, those people are going to die, physically die once again. So all the healings that Jesus came to do here on earth, or while he was here on earth, were at best only temporary when it came to their phys those physical healings. Jesus realized that his bigger mission, his bigger purpose, was to heal us for eternity, to he was to heal us spiritually. And he realized that at the core of all that we see, all that's wrong in this world, was a spiritual problem. It was a sin problem. And he knew that he was the cure. But at that moment, his time had not come yet. He wasn't, he wasn't ready to go to the cross yet. It wasn't time for him to be, to, to, to be that sacrifice. And so as he saw, just as he did at Lazarus' tomb, when he knew he was about to raise Lazarus from the dead, he weeped. He, he, was, he, he was overcome uh, with just the brokenness of it. And that should be our response as well. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a normal and natural response to be depressed at a lot of what we see all around us, to be discouraged by what we see, to be heartbroken over what we see. Um, if we weren't affected, I think, or when we're not affected, I think we're becoming desensitized to the pain and suffering all around us. Or we kind of go into that mode of, you know, judging and saying, well, you know, that you, you, get, you, you reap what you sow, people get what they deserve. And all those, those things may absolutely be true, that people, uh, you know, uh, should face the consequences for the bad choices that they make. It still shouldn't change our heart or our gut response to seeing people in pain. Uh, or even recognizing um, that when people can be can, can tend to hurt others, recognizing that there's a pain behind that as well. 
And so, so much about being able to follow Jesus over there, being able to love people that are not very loving towards us, is being able to see them in the way that Jesus saw them. And that was seeing everyone through his cross. Uh, the second part of the verse I think is really important too, where it says, or this passage where it says, Jesus gathered his disciples around because he knew that his time here on earth was going to be very, very limited. And he wanted to prepare his disciples then and all of us who are call ourselves his disciples now for our mission, that we are his harvesters. We are the ones who are to go into this world and make you know, his truth known that, that there is a different, there's a different life that you can have than being just um, stuck in this brokenness. There's a, there's a better life. There's hope that you can have. There's a, a peace and a fulfillment that you can have. The, the pathways of this, this world marks out for us that, 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 lend, that lead nowhere but pain and destruction. That is not the path that we've been marked to lead. Uh, to live. And so that's who Jesus gathered, huddled up his disciples that day and kind of brought them in on the, the game plan for uh, what his kingdom was all about. He's saying those same words to you and me today. So how do you see others? When you see the pain and the brokenness and, and the despair in people and uh, you know when they're, when they're facing the consequences of a lot of their bad choices, is it with judgment? Is it with indifference? Is it with apathy? Or is it with compassion? Are we truly ready to follow our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, over there into that pain and into that brokenness and show people that there's a way out? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I pray that you would, um, Lord, continue to inspire us through your word, but inspire us through your example. And uh, as you came to be the truth lived out, and Lord, as you encountered the broken people in this world, Lord, you had a heart for the broken people. You had a heart for us, Lord. Um, we were broken. We were stuck in our sin prior to coming to to know you as our Lord and Savior. And Lord, because we've been saved by your grace, I pray that we would be your instruments of grace and, and, and love and mercy um, throughout our day, no matter where you take us, no matter who you bring and cross and who we cross paths with, Lord, and especially for those people that already exist within our circles of influence. Um, Lord, help us to, uh, empower us today through your Holy Spirit to be able to see everyone through your eyes. We love you, Lord, and pray this in your name. Amen. God bless everyone.